Hello and welcome to week three. Uh, before we get into our topic, just want to say if anybody's having any trouble with the course, uh, to give me a call or email me. If I don't get back to you within a couple days, make sure you um, email me again. Um, there's been a couple students that have had their emails kicked back to them. Um, so this week we're talking about biological uh, factors in the development of criminal behavior and it basically all boils down to this little guy. Um, people who consistently show criminal or irresponsibly be irresponsible behaviors um, often have uh, neurological or biological abnormalities that um, contribute to uh, those behaviors. When people develop criminal behaviors later in life, it's oftentimes due to more social factors or um, trauma to the brain. Um, again, be mindful of the nature and nurture debate. Um, this is sometimes called interaction, where biological forces act upon psychosocial factors. They intermingle to um, create um, behavior. Um, even psychopaths, people that are um, criminally ingrained to um, engage in um, antisocial acts, can be contributing members of society um, if they are protected from some of the psychosocial risk factors. So just because some people have um, abnormalities of this little guy doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to grow up and um, be criminals. When looking at the brain and criminal behavior, there are two structures that really uh, jump out at researchers, one being the, the frontal lobe and the other being the uh, limbic system. The limbic system um, is common in all animals. Uh, it tends to be responsible for our fight or flight response. Um, emotions such as fear, aggression, um, other things such as our biological rhythms and um, our sexual behavior um, can all be uh, attributed back to our limbic system, so the, the middle part. Uh, this is our brain stem. Um, where the other part here, the, the frontal lobe, um, that is, especially the prefrontal cortex, so the, the, for the front part of the frontal lobe, um, is involved in planning, decision making, problem solving, things like that. People who have um, deformities in the frontal lobe um, people who have a, a lack of the neurotransmitter serotonin in the frontal lobe um, tend to be more impulsive, make bad decisions, etc. When researchers try to get to the bottom of the nature versus nurture debate, they oftentimes look at twin and adoption studies. When twin studies are um, applied to criminal behavior, we find that um, twins who are identical or monozygotic tend to have a higher concordance rate of uh, criminal behavior. This happens whether they're raised together or raised apart. Our autonomic nervous system regulates important functions for us such as heartbeat, breathing, digestion, blood pressure. Uh, individuals who tend to be anxious and avoiders um, oftentimes have higher levels of autonomic arousal. Their limbo uh, takes less for their limbic system to start um, getting, giving threatening uh, signals to other, other parts of the brain. Uh, individuals who are prone to boredom um, who, or who experience little fear, um, they tend to be more antisocial in nature, um, have lower levels of autonomic arousal. It takes um, more for them to experience a thrill, basically. Um, studies have shown that lower levels of autonomic arousal um, across a wide variety of situations is linked to criminal behavior. Um, because of this, criminals tend to be thrill seekers, they tend to be impulsive, um, and they uh, tend to not be all that affected by things that uh, threaten the average person. Um, so when we consider criminal, uh, classical criminology, we can see why some people might act in a certain situation um, and uh, um, minimize the consequences than uh, the average person. Uh, temperament are uh, basically our uh, mood disposition that is determined by biology and genetics. So in defining temperament, it has a biological basis, it appears in infancy and tends to continue throughout our adulthood and is influenced by our environment. Um, 
our temperament can be uh, correlated to criminal behavior, uh, but it isn't necessarily a cause of criminal behavior in and of itself. Um, for example, irritable children uh, may be at risk for being aggressive in the future. But just because there's many irritable children, that doesn't mean they're going to go on and be aggressive, violent criminals um, as adults. Um, and not all negative traits in um, infancy or throughout our lives are due to our temperamental tendencies. Uh, it may be due to illness or uh, other environmental, biological uh, influences. So some of the temperamental domains include rhythmicity, which is basically our... Um, uh, wake, eat, uh, digestive types of cycles. Um, people who have um, consistent, uh, inconsistent um, body rhythms tend to um, be more unpredictable in their behavior. Uh, moods is another domain. People that are quick to emotion and who people who feel emotions really high, uh, especially folks that are real irritable, um, are more at risk of um, acting out in antisocial ways. Uh, the way a person approaches others, some people are more uh, introverted and apprehensive and shy, and other people are much more outgoing, and um, etc. And then there's the adaptability. Um, some people have difficulty um, acting differently in different situations. For example, a kid or an adult may have difficulty um, sitting still in church and um, you know, not swearing when they're at work. There are many biological and environmental influences that impact criminal behavior. Some are really well uh, researched and some not so much. Um, I want to give you a, a list of some of the bioenvironmental risk factors of criminal behavior that um, are fairly well established in the research. Um, exposure to, to lead paint and toxins. Uh, birth complications, you know, for, you know, such as having a cord wrapped around the neck that causes um, damage to the brain. Uh, teratogens such as uh, uh, parental exposure to nicotine, alcohol, drugs, uh, etc. Uh, neurological abnormalities, dysfunction, uh, especially in the frontal, frontal lobe area. This could come in the form of um, traumatic brain uh, injury um, or um, neurological deficits. Um, problems that impact our executive functioning, you know, such as mental illnesses, as depression, schizophrenia, uh, things like that um, make it difficult to, um, in the height of the illness, um, make good, solid um, decisions and organize. Um, neurotransmitter imbalances, especially looking at serotonin in the, uh, the frontal lobe area. Uh, different hormones, especially uh, high levels of testosterone and having um, an extra Y chromosome in males.